Today's video will be a theoretical video where I'm going to talk about microservices authentication and authorization pattern and pros and cons about each of them. And finally, I'm going to talk about the one I prefer out of the three pattern that I'm going to talk about. So to begin, first let's talk about what is authentication and authorization. So authentication is the process to identify if the user is who it is claiming to be. Meaning when we get an authentication token or API key, the job of the authentication system is to verify against internal system to make sure that the token or the API key is a valid one. And authentication can be done through API key authentication token, user ID password, JWT token, etc. There are multiple ways how the authentication can be done. And after an authentication, once a user is authenticated, the user is authorized to check what are the access level of the user. For example, an authenticated user in most of the scenario might not have access to all the feature of a system. For example, an administrator might have access to all the feature, whereas a manager might have access to part of the system, an employee might have access to some part of the system, and there is always a hierarchical authorization which is defined in any application. In some application, the authorization might even go at a lower level in terms of even what data should be viewed by which role and so on and so forth. Authorization can go against a data source to identify granular access level of an user. And more often than not, an authorization system uses a database for defining granular authorization level based on different roles inside of a system. Now, in terms of authentication and authorization pattern for microservices, now here I'm not going to talk about authentication mechanism, like whether you should use JWT or uh, API key, because those are dependent on what kind of system you are building. For example, in a B2B application where a server is connecting to another service, using an API key is a standard practice. Whereas if a direct user is making call through a web application or a mobile application, the practice is to use authentication token. So it depends on which way the service will be exposed. And in a service, there can be multiple ways of authenticating a call. Now the first way of using authentication and authorization is, is what described in this diagram. So usually when we have microservices, we can straightforward go with the load balancer and the load balancer forwarding requests to multiple microservices based on the URI path. And as a starter, that's a good enough design when you are dealing with very less microservices. It is pretty straightforward and it's very easy to use, especially if you are using cloud provider like AWS or Azure, it's a straightforward configuration. Now in this model, the usual pattern is individual services takes care of both authentication and authorization. And for that, we can use a common NuGet package so that at least the code is reused across multiple services. Now, for the authorization, the authorization logic can be available at a microservice on its own. And the advantage of that is if any authorization implementation or underlying logic changes, individual services do not have to update the common code to implement those logic. So that's one advantage. Now this architecture works fine as long as your system is small and you are dealing with very small number of microservices. When the number of microservices got higher, 
everyone using the NuGet package for authentication and authorization might get little overwhelming. So the next pattern usually is to add a API gateway between the load balancer and the microservices. And the responsibility of the API gateway is to manage authentication and then based on the path, forward the request into different microservices. Whereas the authorization still lies with the microservice itself. And the microservices again can use a common NuGet package and use the auth service to take care of that. Now, one advantage of this mechanism is handling authentication in an API gateway is pretty straightforward and the complexity of authorization can still live inside of individual service. Meaning when the call comes to service, the service can decide which endpoint to call or not and send an unauthorized response back. The final mechanism that we can use for authentication and authorization is where it's the same in terms of overall architecture, meaning from load balancer, we get the request into API gateway and then API gateway in turn forwards the request to individual microservices. But here the authentication as well as authorization, both are managed by the API gateway. And the advantage of this is that individual services are completely unaware of authentication and authorization, and they can only focus on the core business logic. The disadvantage of this implementation is that now API gateway has to be way more intelligent and there have to be way more implementation in API gateway in terms of handling both authentication and authorization. But if we are using cloud-based API gateway or any of the modern API gateway, this is not such a big deal. For example, if we are using the API gateway provided by AWS, then we can always use a Lambda for authentication and a Lambda for authorization. And then from there, we can decide which call goes to where. Now, this is still not going to be straightforward. As for example, if we want to have a data level authorization, meaning when a response is going back, we want to hide some of the data element based on the user role. We still need to have some logic into the individual services to make that happen because we don't want that kind of logic to reside on API gateway. That is not the main responsibility of the API gateway. So in my opinion, and what I personally prefer is the best of both world, which is the second option where we have a load balancer, which connects to the API gateway. An API gateway is responsible for handling only authentication. And then API gateway sends the authenticated token back to individual services. And then individual services can take care of the authorization with the help of an authorization middleware. And in this case, the services has way more option in terms of how they can utilize the authorization information. And apart from authorization middleware, here we can also use individual API level authorization where the individual API can call out to an authorization function from a common code to identify what data element should be returned for a particular role and so on and so forth. So these are at a very high level how we can handle authentication and authorization in terms of overall design for a microservices infrastructure. And here authentication and authorizations are only used for HTTP based web API. The reason for that usually these are the front facing services. We generally do not have asynchronous microservices which are working off of a queue or a stream to have any sort of authentication because they usually are downstream processing microservices and they get the request only after authentication and authorization is done. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.
and if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video